This is a picture of Robert Wadlow, the tallest person in recorded history. Today we'll be taking a look at his life and his growth to becoming a giant. Why he was as tall as he was, why there'll probably never be anyone taller than him, and why that's actually a good thing. Robert Wadlow was born in 1918 in Alton, Illinois in the USA. Born to two regular sized parents, there was nothing particularly remarkable about Wadlow at birth. However, this would change during his early childhood as Wadlow quickly outgrew his peers. By age 8, he was already taller than his father, measuring in at 6 foot 2. He also possessed immense strength, being able to carry his father up the stairs, making him the most terrifying 8 year old ever. Being so large presents some problems though. Wadlow was strong, but he needed to be. In mathematics, the square cube law describes the relationship between the surface area of a shape and its volume as the shape size increases or decreases. Basically, as the shape grows, the volume increases much faster than the surface area. So, if someone was literally double your size, they'd need to have many times your strength to haul around the massively increased mass of their body. This is an issue that obviously puts a lot of strain on the organs. If you drank a potion that made you the size of a skyscraper, your bones would break under your own weight and you couldn't move a muscle. Good luck keeping your heart pumping and your lungs breathing. For Robert Wadlow, his increased size led to him having little feeling in his legs and feet and he required leg braces to walk. Another problem with being so tall is that the world just simply wasn't made for giants. He needed a specially made desk at school and, well, he needed a specially made everything really. Look at the fella. Amazingly, Wadlow did not stop growing after reaching adulthood either. He just got taller and taller and taller. In 1936, he caught the attention of the Ringling Brothers Circus, who took him on tour in 1936, bringing him international fame. Wadlow understood why people found his appearance peculiar, but he didn't want to be treated as a freak. He appeared in the circus's center ring instead of the sideshow and wore his regular day-to-day -day clothes instead of a show suit. Two years later, he began another tour with the International Shoe Company, who supplied him with shoes free of charge. This was very beneficial for Wadlow as he literally had the largest feet ever, with his shoe size coming in at an astonishing US size 37. Here's his shoe compared to a size 12, already a fairly big shoe for the average man. As you can imagine, such a shoe must be custom made and uses a lot of material. These bad boys would have cost somewhere in the region of $1,500 in today's money. Wadlow got them for free and the International Shoe Company got some of the most amazing advertising you could ever hope for. Now that's a business partnership. But believe it or not, Wadlow was not the tallest person ever. Yet. That distinction belonged to John Rogan, who was 8 foot 9 inches when he died. But by 1939, Robert Wadlow's continued growth saw him dethrone Rogan as the tallest person in recorded history. So why was Robert Wadlow so tall? Well, it's the same reason we'll probably never see anyone beat his record. Wadlow's height was attributed to an enlarged pituitary gland, resulting in abnormally high levels of human growth hormone. As previously mentioned, this brings about a lot of problems, including health-related issues, and is preferably medically treated. At the time though, a surgical operation on Wadlow's pituitary gland was too risky. Today, the world's tallest living man is 8 foot 1 Sultan Kosen. At 10 years old, Kosen developed a tumour on his pituitary gland that brought about his extreme height. This was only diagnosed when he was in his 20s, and by 28 he had groundbreaking surgery to remove the tumour and stop his growth. This was not possible in Wadlow's time, and he continued to grow right up until his death. For this reason, he will probably forever remain the tallest person in recorded history. Unless someone can achieve a greater height without a treatable medical issue, which seems unlikely. In 1940, Wadlow was doing a public appearance in Michigan. Just a week before, he had had his leg braces refitted, but one had been fitted poorly, scraping against the skin on his ankle. Due to the lack of feeling he had in his extremities, Wadlow did not notice this until it broke the skin, causing an infection. 
Robert Wadlow succumbed to the infection less than two weeks later, an autoimmune disorder rendering his treatment ineffective. He was only 22 and measured 8 feet 11. His coffin was over 10 foot long and required 12 pallbearers and 8 assistants to carry. I also have somewhat of a personal connection to Robert Wadlow, if you'd care to hear it. This picture of him appeared in my biology textbook at school, under which I scribbled the caption, I must use my powers for good. This was enough to get a laugh out of the girl I liked at the time, and the rest is history. Now he's the subject of one of my videos, so that's twice this man has had a positive influence on my life. He lived across the ocean and died over 50 years before I was born. He would have had no idea that I would ever even exist. He wouldn't have even understood the medium through which I told this story. It's funny the little ripples a person can make through history. It makes me wonder about the impact this channel has on the world, even if it's only a tiny one. I make these videos in my bedroom, but they reach a lot of people. I wonder what tiny changes have been brought about just because I decided to do this one day. If you'd similarly like to make your influence on the world felt, why not consider subscribing, buying a t-shirt or becoming a member of the channel? Maybe your contribution will be my next lunch. The world is smaller than we think. I'm Robert Wadlow, 12 years old, and weigh 240 pounds, and I'm wet. I'm about 7 feet tall.